For nearly two decades, Farrah Fawcett and Ryan O'Neill carried on a turbulent relationship, but never married. They broke up too many times to count, but in 2001, they reunited after Ryan was diagnosed with leukemia. Today, he is in remission. She came right to my side, which I loved her for. And we gradually started a, uh, to rebuild our relationship. Then just as Farrah was helping Ryan heal, she was struck by two devastating events. Her mother was ill, and she had to go to Texas. And her mother passed. And I think if, my, if I'm right, she started bleeding. I said, you have to get back here right away. The diagnosis, a relatively rare disease that only affects about 5,000 Americans a year, anal cancer. Farah had symptoms for only a fairly brief time before her cancer was diagnosed, so, so there really wasn't an opportunity to find it earlier. It unfortunately just progressed. Dr. Lawrence Pirro is the president of the Angeles Clinic and Research Institute. He began seeing Farah two and a half years ago after her cancer didn't respond to the first course of treatment. He has been her principal doctor ever since. By the time I began treating her, she had a situation that was just not curable, it was treatable but not curable. Does that mean a death sentence? Well, it means that uh, we had to use the best tools that we could to try to suppress the tumor, but that we would never get rid of it. So eventually, the likelihood is that she would succumb to her tumor. When you told this to Farah that you have a tumor that's incurable, what did she say? Well, Farah is an amazing fighter, and the only way she could get through this was to think that um, I'm going to find something that will cure my tumor. Can I panicked. Yeah. I didn't let her know, but I panicked. Uh, I've been living it with cancer for eight years at this point, and I saw lots of what cancer can do. And I just knew one thing, that Farrah Fawcett was hard to kill. In watching her over these last two years, that if, if, if there is magic, Farrah will make you believe in magic, because you just think she's going to beat it. You just think she's going to beat it. Where did that courage come from? She's a border girl, you know, down there by the Mexican border. And they grow them tough there. She used to tell me on walking the, to school in, uh, in the summer, she'd step on scorpions barefoot. That became a kind, kind of a game. <laughs> oh, my God. I think she's the most courageous and determined person I've ever met. Alana Stewart has known Farrah Fawcett for almost 30 years and accompanied her throughout her illness. We thought she was going to find a cure. We were both kind of Pollyannish about it and, and, and very optimistic. To pursue more forceful treatment, Farah decided to go to Germany. The feeling is that she went to Germany because they had techniques that we didn't have here, that Germany could have saved her life. All of the treatments that were done in Germany were treatments that in generally can be done here. This was a particular doctor and team of doctors that were very aggressive about doing this repetitively and that's the reason that, that we continued to have her go there. At the time it was hope, a fantastic hope. And Farah's first uh, a couple of trips went very well. Thing is you can kill that tumor in the liver, you can kill that one and you can kill that one, every one you see. But that doesn't mean two or three don't pop up on their own. <sighs> so we brought her home. Farah began bringing a small video camera to her doctor's appointments. She soon enlisted Alana to help. She wanted to record everything they said so she could remember it. And I said, okay, how? <laughs> Since, I mean, I'm lucky to be able to use an Instamatic. And she said, here, you push the record button and point it in this direction. And that's how we started filming. There were nine tumors in my liver stage four cancer. Last May, NBC reportedly paid several million dollars to air Farah's story. Using Farah's video diary, it documented her trips to Germany to pursue aggressive treatments. <sighs> Many scenes were raw and devastating, like this one of Farah vomiting. We shouldn't have flown today, you know, shouldn't have flown. Over nine million viewers were riveted and inspired by Farah's apparent willingness to show the destructive and ugly reality of cancer. Did Farah approve the final cut? 
Farah turned the final cut over to Ryan because she was unable at that point to go into the editing room and, you know, to carry out her vision. And she turned it over to Ryan and asked him to do it because she trusted him. Farah's doctors made every effort to prevent her from losing her famous hair, but even that battle was eventually lost. Was it a mistake to choose the treatment that wouldn't take her hair? We had many discussions about this, and if at any moment the choice would be better to choose a drug where she would lose her hair, we would do that, and in fact, we did. What was it like when Farah began to lose that gorgeous hair? We were talked about it constantly, because for a long, long time, even when she was getting the treatments, she still had a full head of hair, and we were quite amazed. And then, all of a sudden, her hair started to thin. And like every time Farrah does something like that, I went over to her house and she said, let's just get rid of it. And Spontaneous like that. And you, we did. You shaved her head? Yeah. Was she very upset? Not at all. We actually, no, 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 we were giggling. We realized that she had an amazing head shape. I'm glad you left the bangs. In the NBC documentary, many were shocked to see Farrah without her hair. She took it in stride like she did everything. And she, you know, when she went out, she wore a cap. And around the house, she didn't wear anything. You know, she just was okay with it. Was it hard for you to see her without that hair? No, it was more painful to see her fighting that disease. Never once after shaving her hair has she ever regretted it, talked about it, cried about it. She just looked forward and marched on.